Hello, welcome back. We're going to take a look at one single paragraph of the text today, which contains a significant amount of information about this entire thought system and the idea that it's total or it's not at all. It's all or nothing. I know, right? It's either total or it's not at all. Now, the specific part of the text is in chapter 7, section 6 here that we've moved on to. Paragraph 1, that's all we're going to take a look at today. And the main idea is it's total or it's not at all. It's all or nothing. Isn't that exciting? Now, you may, especially if you're hearing this for the first time, you may be thinking, what do you actually even mean? What the hell? <laughs> and that is a very good and legitimate question. This is a good question because what do we actually mean by this in this world where we have chosen to see multiplicity? Multiplicity, where there appear to be 8 billion of us, more or less. There appear to be countless more billion animals and insects and fish. And here in Homo sapiens sapiens land, there appear to be multiple divisions, categories, subdivisions based on all kinds of supposedly real factors that we all made up and they're not real at all. We see multiplicity in the world, but there is only perfect oneness. This is 180 degrees, the opposite. Truth is, of course, opposite from illusion. There is no illusion. There is only truth. So in learning to perceive truly, we need a complete change of thought, a change of mind. We're switching thought systems from the thought system of the ego to the thought system of the Holy Spirit, your inner teacher. We're switching that here in our study of A Course in Miracles. Nothing less than that, nothing more. There is nothing more. That's what we can do while we appear to be here running around as a human being. So we think. <laughs> Yeah, let the ego chew on that one for a little bit. Freak out. Which it, of course, does. So, it's either total or it's not at all. We either switch thought systems completely or we remain in ego land. Suffering. Really, it is. It's all or nothing. You may have heard the idea that forgiveness is either total or it's not at all. Here's why. Paragraph one here. This is what we're looking at. Is the sonship, in other words, your brother, you, right? The sonship, all of us, can be loved only as one, okay? It's total. The sonship can be loved as one, only as one, but we can perceive it as fragmented. It is one, but we can see it differently. We can see it as eight billion human beings, plus all the other animals and fish and invertebrates and microorganisms that we appear to share this spinning ball of rock with. We can see it as multiplicity. We can see ourselves as separate from all the other countless billion organisms out there. And we can. We can see ourselves as totally solo with everyone else out to get us. Which, when we identify 
as an ego. That's, that is how we see it. Even if it doesn't feel like it moment to moment when you appear to be cooperating with somebody, does that last forever <laughs> in a business relationship? You know, in politics, in international politics, does an alliance ever last forever? No. Human history gives us countless examples of impermanence. That's all it will ever give us. Impermanence. Our reality is permanent, constant. It's true. We're awakening to that. So here's the deal with the way we perceive. This is very, very important. And here's why forgiveness is either total or it's not at all. Here's why that's all or nothing. is because when we perceive one part of anything as fragmented, we automatically perceive the whole as fragmented. When you see yourself as an individual self-sustaining survival unit cut off from other individual self-sustaining survival units, say that 20 times really fast, when you see yourself this way, you see everyone as an individual self-sustaining survival unit and you lose sight of oneness completely. That's the way that works. Enter A Course in Miracles. Enter the guidance of your inner teacher. Enter true forgiveness of the Son of God. Our practice here in this thought system of changing our mind and learning to perceive truly. Through this, we repeat, rinse, repeat, the idea that there is only perfect oneness. And we grow accustomed to this in our minds. And we grow accustomed to allowing truth to be just as it is. And letting it be just as it is. So rather than eight billion, there's one. The only number that you ever have to count to in A Course in Miracles. That's the math test, one. It is not complicated. We make it complicated, again. That is an idea that bears repeating as often as we need it. Because that's where we find ourselves when we see ourselves as cut off and competing for what we deem to be scarce resources or slices of an imaginary pie. There are no limits, so there's no pie pan. There's no exterior edge of anything. There's only perfect oneness. There's no pie. We're not competing for a slice of it and pushing our brother aside at the table because we want the last crumb. Yeah. Now, you don't have to see life that way. We're invited and encouraged to see it that way. Of course, just turn on the news. Turn on your social media feed. You see competition left and right, people condemning other people, spouting crap on their feeds just because they can. And they've been given multiple platforms to do it here with modern technology, which can be used just as easily by your inner teacher to extend love We're invited to give our entire experience over to our inner teacher. He will reinterpret everything for us. Or if you prefer, she will reinterpret everything for you, or it will interpret everything for you, or they will interpret everything for you. What you call your inner teacher doesn't make any difference at all. We've all got one, the same one. So... Call your inner teacher what you will, or call it nothing at all, but get in touch with it. This is the part of our mind that speaks for God. This is the part of our mind that shows us what to do in every circumstance if we give our entire experience over to him, her, it, them, 
for guidance. In so doing, we're setting the ego aside, because let's think about it. What you're doing when you give your entire experience over to your inner teacher is you're saying all of this manipulation, all these orchestrations, and all of the stuff that I've tried to do has only frustrated me further. Take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> you know that common phrase, and people spout it without actually giving any thought to what it actually means. It's setting the ego aside, guys. It's setting the ego aside to get in touch with your inner teacher and let your inner teacher direct everything. Give all of your experience over to the inner teacher, totally not hiding some stuff because it's total. It's all or nothing. It's total or it's not at all. Forgiveness is either total or it's not at all. Giving your experience over to your inner teacher is either total or it's not at all. We cannot hide our little pockets of judgment and condemnation. For example, we can't forgive some people and not others. That's not forgiving at all. It's not partial. It's total or it's not at all. It's all or nothing. It is. Salvation is total or it's not at all. Forgiveness is total or it's not at all. Here in the world, of course, we don't see it that way. We just don't. We see everything as complicated and it's needless. The core principles of spirituality are simple. We have only to accept them and to work with them day to day as a practical application. So when we regard anyone fearfully, we regard everyone fearfully. When we regard people with love, we regard everyone with love. Fear or love is the choice that we make in the present moment. In other words, we choose either the thought system of the ego or the thought system of the Holy Spirit. Love or fear, life or death, truth or illusion, self with a capital S versus lowercase s, little ego self, self-sustaining survival unit. That's the choice that we make. When we regard our brother with love, we regard everyone with love. When we regard our brother with disdain, contempt, fear, and hatred, so do we regard everyone else, including ourselves, because who's your brother? There's only perfect oneness, so who is he? Who are you? Let's extend this. Right? There is only perfect oneness. Ideas remain in the mind of the thinker. Ideas leave not their source. Now, you often see this idea in A Course in Miracles under the meaning of thoughts stay in the mind of the thinker. They remain in the mind of the thinker. And source is written in this case with a lowercase s. Now, ideas leave not their source, capital S. I invite you to think about this. Because ideas remain in the mind of the thinker. You are the thought of God. We're referred to as the thought of God many times and in many places here in this course. And think about it. Of course you are. You're not a body. You're spirit, the thought of God. You remain in the mind of God. Ideas leave not their source. Where are you? What are you? Who are you?
I invite you to do that verbal math. It's uncomplicated, yet we're not conditioned to accept this truth. We think we're something and someone else. We've never left our source, capital S. So here in the world, while we appear to be here, let's learn to regard our brother with love and only love. One of the famous ideas from the text of A Course in Miracles comes from a section known as Lessons of the Holy Spirit. And it's teach only love, for that is what you are. It is what you are. So let's learn this by doing it, by forgiving, by extending the Holy Spirit to your brother. As we learn to regard our brother with only love, that's all we see. And it's either total or it's not at all. We can't keep our little dramas off to ourselves in a corner. And we can't forgive some people and not others. That's not forgiving. Forgiving everyone, the world itself, space, time, yeah, the ego, yourself for dreaming it, all of that, that's forgiving. Totally. So the invitation goes out to forgive. Totally. Yes, try it. And let's see, if you really try it, how you feel. All right. So thank you, as always, for tuning in and for joining me. The subscription button's the red arrow here in the corner of your screen. And I invite you to go ahead and join us and subscribe if you've not already. I, I very much appreciate all of your comments and questions as well. So this is designed to be a help for you. It's designed to be a forum where you can ask questions related to A Course in Miracles, related to your path, to your own healing, and please feel welcome to do so. All right, and I will talk to you all again very soon. Thank you, as always, for joining me.